Hello YouTube, I am the Twilight Gamer, but you can call me Midnight, and I am with Mitchell from the first episode of the Pokemon Yellow Guest Lock, which I will put in the description if you haven't seen it already. Hey guys! Right, after a lot of fiddling with settings, I finally got it set up, so um, I we are playing a virtual novel. A visual novel, I'll get there eventually, called Seduce Me, and it does have voice acting. I am going to put a warning here before you go any further. There is a warning in the game, but before you go any further, there is implied rape, and there is sex scenes, there is stuff like that. So before, so I am giving you this warning now. It will be in the beginning. Okay, I've I think I've set it so you can hear the voice acting. If not, then just say and I can set and I can make the desktop volume louder and see if I can make Skype quieter. Okay, so let's jump in. This is a fictional interactive narrative. Any character resemblance to real life people are purely co co coincidental. Also, please know that the following game is made for PG-16 audiences. Please know that sexual violent themes are explored in the game. Trigger warnings, abuse, implied rape, and suicide. You have been warned. Please enjoy. Why, hello. My, aren't you a gorgeous Still got a dud. Can I be honored enough to know your name? I hope you heard that because I am not reading it aloud. I didn't hear Jack. Well, you can hear, you can watch it back. It's probably because you're on Skype. I don't think you can hear the audio on Skype because I definitely have the audio on. Ah. Mm, a lovely name for a lovely person like you. Oh, I just got an achievement. Wonderful. Yeah, I am playing this on Steam. It's a free game on Steam. I probably should have mentioned that. Um, I will link this game in the description. But it is a free game on Steam. It just appeared on my Steam, so... Eric, do your job. Oh, and don't forget about well. linking the podcast. This game was produced by Seraphim Entertainment under the direction of Michaela Laws and is powered by Renpy Visual Novel Engine. We truly hope you'll enjoy this story. I know I'll enjoy it. Since you'll be in it. Mitch, the podcast is a linked channel on my channel wall. Wait, wait, don't you mean featured? Yes, same thing. The podcast is a featured channel. Anyone who goes on my channel will see it. Will see it. Podcast? Eric. The podcast has more subscribers than I do anyway. Fine, fine. Say that. <laughs> Farewell, my sweet. I don't. Th I next time you next when you post this, tell me, because I don't think I have the notification bell on you. Well, that's mean. Oh, you're very mean. Somewhere. I don't know how I have it on Josh though. <sighs> well then. <laughs> Come on. Is that all you got? Wanna try me, asshole? Oh, so apparently there is swearing in this. Okay then. Well, if you if you're not okay with abuse and you're okay with if you're not okay with abuse and not okay with swearing, well, okay, hang on. If you're okay with abuse and not okay with swearing, then <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. But if you're not okay with swearing, then <laughs> your best bet is to probably leave this video now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since that's probably not going to be the only swear here. If you even consider asshole a swear. Okay, that's very loud for me, so I'm just gonna turn it down. Turn my volume down on my headphones a bit. There we go. <laughs> Crap! Missed! Let's retreat for now. N no kidding. Let's get out of here. That's right. You better run, you stupid punks! Stay out of our territory! 
Well then. Call it fate or call it coincidence. That one moment of violence started a chain of events I will never forget. I will read the bits that don't have voice acting, but the stuff that does... Uh... This formula, created in the 70s, is one of the most important in the field of financial theory. Stuff that does have voice acting, I'm not going to read. Is so that... Uh... It is used to calculate the price of European-style options and is widely used by option marketers. Though there are some discrepancies that are now corrected with the modern viewpoint. I think that's rain. It's like sound of rain in the background. Yeah, that's rain. Rain. It's been a long time since we've gotten rain around here. The the season there is a season for rainy weather, so it's not exactly that surprising. What is surprising is it's not raining here where I live. <laughs> And it's and it rained like hell over here. <laughs> Personally, I love the sound of it. The way the raindrops fell, like the soft tapping of fingers. It was so soothing. Even looking at the droplets hit even looking at the droplets hit the glass of the window was strangely calming. For this reason, I felt lucky for having a seat next to the window. I thought I did spend more time staring outside than I did paying attention in class. To be fair, I managed to look out the window without being next to it in class, so... Don't need a seat by the window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same here. <laughs> the lectures in class were pretty boring. Miss Phillips' voice wasn't so horrific, but I just wasn't interested in what she was saying. And since it was the period right before lunch, all I could think about was doing other things in my free time. Honestly, I didn't care much for economics. Sure, I had good grades in, my, in this class, but it was only because I read the textbook and did the, my assignments as I had to. I was only taking this class because it was mandatory. If it was up to me, I would have take, probably taken another course. Luckily, it was my senior year. So, after this semester, it'll mean the end of high school courses forever. Thank God for that. I don't hate high school. It was just kind of mundane how the days drifted on and on, as if there were no end to it. The only thing I really enjoyed about going to school was meeting my friends and hanging out with them, but that was kind of it. In short, I was Dang. done with high school. The, second of, the start of second semester brought a note of finality to it. I had already applied to so many universities the semester prior, and was expecting reply sometime in the next few week, a few months. It seemed like the start of something new, something that would change. That is, if things could change. I stared at the faint outline of raindrops in the distance. For now, I was stuck in this class. Miss Anderson. Miss Phillips' raised voice interrupted my train of my train of thought. Just when I was thinking about class, I quickly turned my head to face the teacher. Hopefully, she didn't pick me out just because she noticed that I was spacing out. Um. Yes, ma'am. Would you care to name the equation I set up on the blackboard? Oh, I think I read about that in the textbook last night. It should be the black Scholes module formula. Is that how it's pronounced? Probably. Model formula. Very good as always, Miss Anderson. Anderson. Follow me wherever I went. Most people didn't really know me by my first name, but rather by my surname. No doubt, since the surname was the trademark of the internationally famous and philanthropic... Philanthropic. That's it. Philanthropic Anderson Family Toys. And because the founder was my own grandfather. My brain just isn't working with these long words today. God. Susan, one of my best friends, can't even. turned around and proudly gave me a punch to the shoulder. Kick ass, girl. I love the voice acting in this, so good. From beside me, I heard Naomi, 
one of my other best friends, clearing her throat in obvious disapproval of Sophie, uh, Suzu's choice of words. Why did I say Sophie? Sophie. Mm, she <laughs> she Shut up! <laughs> Miss Capini. Oi! Care to tell me who the creators of this formula were? Uh, some guys named Black and Shoals. Warren. <clears throat> Fisher Black and Myron Shoals. Very good, Miss Patterson. Show off. I have to say, I like doing games with voice acting. I did record um, Sonic, I think it was Sonic and the Black Knight or whatever it is for the Wii, but I didn't, I couldn't get it up. So eventually that series never went up, but I did record it and it was the first one that I recorded with proper voice acting and I liked not having to do much, to say much. Better study next time, Suzu. Be like us and study once in a while. Suzu rolled her eyes and slouched in her chair into her chair as Naomi gave her a small smirk. She was always she always pounded when Naomi showed her up. That's the end of today's lecture. <laughs> now, let's separate into groups and work on your projects. Remember, everything is due on Monday. Go ahead now. Before I knew it, Suzu and Naomi had scooted their desk to align with mine, and we turned into the three musketeers. Whenever the teacher let the students decide on groups, we were always grouped together in our little trio. It was a sheer stroke of luck that we all managed to be in the same class, so we had to at least take the opportunity and stick together as much as we could. Besides, we were most comfortable around each other than, say, compared to being around any other classmates. It just made sense for us to put our heads together for any kind of project. I took out the poster we were working on and rolled it open to onto the three desks. We were pretty much finished with fulfilling most of the guidelines for the project, though we did still have to add a few finishing touches here and there. After working on making the poster a bit prettier, we sat back and, expect and inspected our work to see what we still had to do. Naomi, as usual, was the first to look for any issues. She lightly tapped a pencil against her chin, staring intently at the project. Alright, so let's see. We finished the budgeting section, the building leasing, and the cost for labor. What else do we need? Suzu straightened up to look at the poster and stroked her chin. After a few seconds, her face brightened and she spoke up. How about a company name? Huh? Did we really skip over that? Of course we did! You always go straight really into the logical that. statistics and stuff, but you completely skip over the fact. We need a name for our project. Ugh, at least we caught it this time. What do we name it? Hmm, not sure. What do you think? It always came down to me. Never there was something to be named or titled. I was the master in ending decisions. I was the master in ending decision, even when I didn't want to be. I like Trinity Corporations. That is way too predictable. How about the Dragon no. Company? What do dragons have to do with our project? What? It's a totally unpredictable name. It's hot. But our company sells bubble gum. <sighs> what do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Both of them looked at me expectantly, even though I wasn't quite sure myself. I didn't really want to choose sides, but if it were up to me, I would say... I don't like either of them, though, to be fair. How about Dragon Company? You have a coin? Uh, yeah, of course I do. Do a heads or tails situation here. Okay, which one's heads and which one's tails? That's oh, Tempe. He heads is Trinity. Tails, tails is Dragon, is okay. Dragon. Best, best of three. That's heads.
Heads. So it's Trinity. Yep. Ah, fine. Be lame. Alright, now that we've decided on- I just hit my wall. I'm not sure if you heard that, but I just hit my wall. My elbow hurts now. As we ended our name game, a giggle scrambled my thoughts. <laughs> huh? Who was that? I looked over my shoulder to see her laughing with her circle of friends, mostly comprised of popular people that were practically friends with everyone at school. Okay, I keep accidentally skipping part, uh, skipping past speaking parts, so I apologize for that. As a result, everyone in the school knew them. In the center of it all was Lizette White. She sat with a posture that indicated she was still working, but that she also was ready to casually chat about her day. She had an endearing balance of charismatic and awkward, which, w which was readily apparent when she first talked to someone. It was easy to make her smile and laugh. She was quite the comedian comedian as well. Basically, she was perfect. Not that she was like a robot or something, but she was the student that everyone wanted to be. Lizette, Lizette was bright, easygoing, and above all, had a future laid out right in front of her. Unlike the average student, she knew what she wanted to do after high school, and as a result, she was confident and ambitious, though sometimes it could rub a lot of people the wrong way. Moreover, I had never known her ever. Moreover, I had known her since I was young, but it had ultimately resulted in a rivalry that continued today. I actually have that. There was someone in my class who I'd been friends with when I was young, and they ended up bullying me, so it wasn't a good relationship. Of course, my friends knew what was between us, and upon seeing me glance at her, they shifted their attention to her. She doesn't even look like she's working, in my opinion. She probably is, but she's too much of a stuck-up Chris to allow herself to look like she's actually doing work. Oh, come on, Suzu. She may be a little off-putting, but she's not the giant Chris that you're making her seem to be. The day she isn't a Pris is the day I turn into you. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Bouch. That's a uh, back and forth between them. It's about time. Let's bail. That was harsh. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Suzu was the first one out of the classroom, slinging her backpack over her shoulder with ease as she strolled out the door. She doesn't even close us to the exit, and she always manages to be the first one out of the door. I don't think I'll ever understand that. I wish I was as fast as her getting out of here. Naomi folded her arms close to her chest, giving me a disappointing look. A disappointed look. Oh, not you too. She's turning you into a delinquent. <laughs> it's a joke, Naomi. <laughs> It's not really funny. Oh, I thought it was very <laughs> funny. You guys are slow. Are you coming Me or too. what? We heard you the first time. Not everyone has rocket boosters attached to their legs when the bell rings. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that class was ridiculously boring. Even Miss Valedictorian here was dozing off a bit. <laughs> I do have to admit, I was spacing out. And just because I answered one question, doesn't mean I'm automatically the valedictorian. Okay, so it wasn't too interesting. But you should at least pay attention when Phillips is talking about the important parts. So you finally admit it. We're finally on the same wavelength. Welcome to the club, Patterson. Please, don't call me by my last name. This isn't the classroom. Never in a million years will we ever see things eye to eye. Well, these two are Bunch. complete opposites. Well, they're in their arguing. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Despite this, they both burst out in laughter. Normally, anyone would think that opposites like them wouldn't ever associate with each other. 
But even though they were so different, their friendships somehow made a lot of sense. Maybe they were just perfect compliments, or personally, just didn't dictate the possibility of their friendship. After all, we three had been best friends since preschool. Alright, so where are we heading to first? Cafeteria? I think we can all agree that we're really hungry, especially after hearing about our company's line of deliciously spicy bubblegum. <laughs> Who would even buy that? I wonder. Me? I would pay good money to get a taste of it. Hmm, spicy bubblegum. I don't think I'll buy no. that. Yeah, I like spicy stuff, but I don't want spicy bubblegum. <laughs> you do like spicy food, after all. We enter the cafeteria, a bursting room filled with the aromas of different kinds of food. As we got in line, we ordered our meals and chatted freely. Cajun fries and the spicy chicken burger for me. That's my definition of a good meal. Yum! <laughs> I'll take a tuna sandwich and some juice. You're probably going to need water or something to curb all that spicy flavor, Suzu. You shouldn't actually drink water while eating spices. Because it just makes it worse. It's, you need something like milk or something like that. Milk or yogurt. I can't be tamed by the likes of that. If it's spicy, then it's got to be all or nothing. You're crazy. Oh, yeah, I'm crazy. I think I'm getting a <laughs> <the> migraine. <laughs> yep. I think I'll go with... Just mac and cheese and a soda. That sounds good. Once we have food, we settle on the empty tables, putting our backpacks aside to finally dig into the food. I actually don't like mac and cheese. I just, just just didn't want to agree with just Suzu. I, I just didn't I just didn't want to get what they were having. I wanted to be unique, Mitchell. <laughs> well, you are unique. Suzu leaned back in her chair, tilting it back so she could rest her feet on the table by her food. All right then. Is there anything we want to talk about? <laughs> Bored already. I know. Let's talk about. Boys, and I will never speak to you ever again. <laughs> Aww, why not? What's so interesting about talking about guys? Not like any of us are gonna get boyfriends anytime soon. We don't know that. What if one of us does get a boyfriend? <laughs> like, that's going to happen, Naomi. Look at us. I'm a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy boy. I'm a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy boy. Hey! <laughs> no offense. <laughs> and Anderson here. Well, I guess she could find a boyfriend or girlfriend if she wants. Or girlfriend? She can be a lesbian if she wants. <laughs> oh. That's okay, Suzu. I'm not sure I want a boyfriend yet. Why not? It's our senior year. Might as well get a boyfriend. <laughs> and they're talking about boys! <laughs> Maybe she's just not interested in a relationship, Suzu. Well, it wasn't really, it really wasn't about wanting a relationship, but more of there was no one interesting enough to be in a relationship with. Don't get me wrong, I'm an open person, but there were not many interesting guys in the school to go out with. Who knows, time will tell. Naomi looked at me, wanted to continue the conversation. However, before she could speak, the speakers in the cafeteria started up and an announcement echoed through the cafeteria. Miss Anderson, please come to the main office immediately. Please bring your things with you. Oh my. Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally uh -oh. come to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Suzu, don't joke around. What if it's serious? Ah, fine. If something happens, just call us. Funny enough, something did happen, and it was certainly no laughing matter. Cold. It was really cold. The rain became heavier that afternoon, accompanied by rolling thunder now and then. The skies had turned dark, even though I couldn't see any of it underneath the black umbrella. Not that I was looking up. In fact, 
Looking up was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I stared at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look up at people weeping around me. All I could see was the damp grass underneath my feet. Only the monotone eulogies that floated around my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. It was only when the speeches ended that I was finally able to raise my head. A small gathering of people, mostly made of relatives that I didn't even know were related to me, were huddled around a simple, small grave. For a while, all I heard was the sound of raindrops and umbrellas. If it weren't raining, everything would have probably been a heavy silence. I looked beside me where my father was standing, holding up a large black umbrella for a small family of three. His face was emotionless, a strange sight next to my weeping mother. I wondered what was going through his mind. After all, etched into the smooth grey teams domed before us was his father's name. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own daughter, had passed away that day. The ceremony was small, only close family were allowed to come. Slowly, though, people began to leave, leaving my father, mother and me behind the, at the grave. A man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniforms under the uniform black umbrella of the funeral attendees walked towards us, introducing himself as grandfather's lawyer. He pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and began to read aloud its content. And now, I shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. Only my parents and I were allowed to be present for my grandfather's will. It was under the strict request of his lawyer, and there was a reason why. And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. What? I couldn't believe my ears. I had earned the family estate? At 18? That was impossible. And yet, it was written by my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not surprised? Well, father doesn't seem to like that very much. Dear. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? No. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. <laughs> Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. Shaking his head, my father turned to face my mother with a serious expression on his face. About the estate. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Honey, what do you think? I wasn't really sure what to say. Why did my grandfather think I was the appropriate heir to the mansion? Was I even ready to live on my own? Well, that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. Someone salty! <laughs> David! Even though she raised her voice, my dad wordlessly began walking back to the car, disinterested. Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? You can go on ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time alone with Grandpa. Oh, of course. Take all the time you need. She gave me a quick hug and hurried after my dad. I looked around the funeral grounds, which was completely empty, save for the sullen-looking grave that was laid in front of me. I'm sure that if Grandpa were in charge of arranging all this, it would have been much different. It was blatant, blatantly obvious that my dad was in charge of the whole event. Who else would bury their own family the same day they pass away? Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the grave was a mere stone slab in the ground, void of any children's toys. My dad didn't even bother putting flowers. 
His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but the only thing that came out was a choked sob. You told me to stay strong, but right now, I'm the furthest from it. Like that one time, a long time ago. Grandpa! Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. I was swept into a giant bear hug. We both laughed as he swung me around like an aeroplane. It was one of my favourite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he greeted me. Unlike my father, my grandfather was loving and playful, even as I grew older. Sorry that Daddy couldn't come be here to get today. Couldn't be here today. He said he wasn't feeling too good again. He had always been like that. Dad missed every visit to Grandpa's house, citing that he was busy with work or wasn't feeling well. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time, and you're here, right? Mm, yeah. So what are we doing here today, Grandpa? Mommy says that there's a new dessert cafe open in town. Maybe we can go? Oh, I would love to, but I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Yes! Oh, is that a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them, but I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Of course! He placed the toy in my hands with a smile, and I expected it carefully. It was beautifully, it was beautifully ca crafted, and obviously, a lot of work was put into it. There was one thing, though. So, what do you think? Hmm, I think the heart in his chest should light up when you hug it. It'll be like it's alive, and it can be a little nightlight before you sleep. He stroked his chin, considering my input, while nodding his head. After a few moments of silence, of silent deliberation, he turned to me with a chuckle. That's a great idea. I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. <laughs> well, I hope I'm going to be like you one day, Grandpa. You want to make toys as well? Hmm, well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I want to make toys when I grow up, though. 32 minutes. I think we should get on with ending this soon. Don't worry too much about it. You have yeah. plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. That makes sense. Daddy doesn't think of it in the same way, though. Your father. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. I'm not so sure about that. Sweetie, look at me. He bent down to look at me eye level, with a serious look on his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. I don't hate Daddy. I really do love him. I don't know why he's like this, so... Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. I had heard tidbits of this from my mother and various other people. The only people who had stayed quiet were my father and grandfather. Both of them refrained from saying a word on the subject matter. It was clear that whatever happened set up a wall between them. It's hard though, trying to pretend as if nothing were wrong. However, no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Daddy, Mommy, your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. How can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. He pointed his fingers at my head first, and then pointed at my chest. Seriously, that's like the most cliche thing to say ever. No kidding. So stay strong, promise? For a moment, he looked almost sad, pleading. But as quickly as it had come, the expression disappeared from his face, 
and he was all smiles once again. Promise! Upon hearing that, Grandpa let out a great burst of laughter and stood up. Alright then, enough of that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know I can't accompany you at that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Homemade dessert? I'll race you to the kitchen! Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> Alright, how long is that now? 35 minutes. Let's send it off here. Thank you for thank you for watching. Um please like, comment and subscribe. It really helps. Also check out my social media. The links will be in the description. Okay, bye. See ya.